On Monday, March 27, 1961, a teenage hitchhiker was picked up in Centerville, Alabama. The driver who picked this young man up probably thought he was helping him out, but this event soon took a turn for the worse. Let's talk about the boy who, up until recently, was only known as the Bibb County John Doe. In the early evening hours of March 27th, 36-year-old Cottondale resident James White picked up a teenage boy hitchhiking. The boy told James that he wanted to get to Tuscaloosa, but that his ultimate goal was to join the military. The boy said he needed to be at Fort Ord, all the way in California, in just three days. But he would never make it there. Not too long after picking him up, James White lost control of a car going over the Riverbend Bridge. The car fell 250 feet into the Cahaba River below. James White was able to get out of the car and swim to shore. His passenger was not. James was taken to a hospital where he informed staff that the wreck had had a fatality. Divers retrieved the boy's body around 9 o'clock that night, still in the front seat. The boy had no identification on him, but was estimated to be between 14 and 15 years old, approximately 5 feet 6 inches tall and 113 to 120 pounds, with light brown hair and blue eyes. Later estimates would place his age as young as 13 and as old as 17. An autopsy determined he'd broken his neck and hand in the wreck. His cause of death has been listed by some sources as a broken neck and others as drowning. It was also discovered during the autopsy that he might have walked with a limp. The boy also had an interesting marking on his arm. Some sources described it as a self-inflicted scar and others as a homemade tattoo. The marking slash tattoo read, RY plus love. Even though he was carrying no identification or a wallet, the boy did have a few other items with him, including Paul Mall cigarettes from South Carolina, a backpack with heavy winter clothes inside, and a photo of himself with a young girl. Someone had written on the back of the photo, Think of me always, and remember how we used to go places together. He was also wearing an immaculate conception medal and a Timex wristwatch. As it turned out, the boy had been picked up by a couple of other drivers earlier in the day. After coming forward, one of these drivers told investigators that the boy had claimed to be hitchhiking from the Carolinas to San Diego and that he wanted to join the military. He told another driver that his parents had just divorced and he wanted to join the Navy because his only other option would have been living in an orphanage. Other reports say he was trying to find work in Alabama but had been unsuccessful. Not too long into the investigation, a woman in Huntsville, Alabama named Mary McNeese thought the boy might be her 17-year-old son, James Biles. James had been working in Pensacola, but called his mom the Saturday before John Doe died and told her he was going to hitchhike to Savannah, Georgia to look for work. McNeese thought the resemblance between the John Doe and her son was uncanny, and he fit the description. She sent pictures of James to a sheriff in Alabama, but he concluded it was a different boy because they had different colored eyes. After being recovered, John Doe's body was displayed in a local funeral home in the hopes that someone could identify him. Coroner Jack Lee, who also owned the funeral home, was contacted by several families across Alabama who thought John Doe might be someone they knew, but these all led to dead ends. There are a couple of people who came to view John Doe's body who got some more attention than others. One man had a heart attack when he viewed the body. There was speculation that the boy was his son, but this was never confirmed. There was an older woman who came to view the body two days in a row and stayed an unusually long time both times, but nobody ever got any additional information from her. John Doe's body would be displayed at the funeral home for two weeks before being buried in Central Cemetery. A sketch of him would be circulated in newspapers and police would investigate over 300 tips. But for over six more decades, his identity would remain a mystery. 
Over the years, there has been a lot of speculation about the Bibb County John Doe. Let's go over just a few of the things people have theorized. First off, people wondered about his age, specifically if he was even old enough to join the military. One person on Web Sleuths wondered if he'd run away from the Dozier School in Florida. I talked a little bit about the Dozier School in my video on Paul John Knowles, which I will leave a link to below. From what I researched in that video, it didn't seem like a very good place to be. Other people wondered where he was from and speculated that he might be from further north than he claimed. Remember, the backpack he was carrying had heavy winter clothes inside. March in Alabama is sometimes cooler, but it's not usually cold enough for these kinds of clothes. And there was speculation about the boy's potential personal life and just who he was. Some people thought he might be a civil rights activist since there were a lot of those traveling to the area at the time. Others also wondered if he was Catholic because of the Immaculate Conception Medal. A lot of speculation centered on the boy's seemingly homemade tattoo. People wondered not only whose initials were carved into his arm, but whether he'd done it himself or had gotten a friend or a family member to do it for him. Most people seemed to think the initials were those of him and the girl in the photograph, the latter of whom has never been publicly identified. In 2016, John Doe's body was exhumed for DNA, but no match was found at the time. The case was reopened in 2021, and by this time there were several more new DNA techniques that hadn't been available even just a few years earlier. True crime YouTuber Gray Hughes funded the new investigation into John Doe's identity, and the case was taken over by Identifiers International. DNA was extracted from John Doe's teeth and entered into genealogy databases. John Doe's DNA eventually led these new investigators to a few of his cousins. One of them told them about his cousin, Danny, who had run away from home years earlier. Danny also walked with a limp due to having polio as a child. Remember, the Bibb County John Doe was thought to have possibly walked with a limp. In October 2021, a worker from Identifiers International contacted a man named Donald Hamilton, the brother of John Doe, inquiring about a missing person in the family. At first, Donald thought it was a prank call, but when the same investigator contacted his wife, he realized what was going on. Donald did have two missing brothers, David and Danny. All three boys had left home at a young age and hadn't been in contact much since then. Researchers at Identifiers International sent Donald a post-mortem photo of John Doe, who had still been recognizable just after he died. Donald identified the boy as his brother, Danny. In a news conference broadcast via Zoom on October 30th, 2021, it was officially announced that the Bibb County John Doe had been identified as Danny Armantrout. Daniel Paul Armantrout was born on December 28, 1945, in Miami, Florida, to mom Jenny and dad Alfred. He was also welcomed by his two older brothers, Donald and David. Danny's parents eventually divorced, and his mom remarried a man named Jim. In 1958, Danny, his brothers, his mom, and his stepdad all moved to Paris, Tennessee. As had been earlier speculated, Danny's family was Catholic, but despite this, the early lives of Danny and his brothers were far from ideal. They claimed their stepdad beat them with a belt and that their mom would starve them for weeks at a time and burn their fingers with matches. David was the first to leave home in 1960 at the age of 19. Later that year, Donald also left and joined the army. In January of 1961, a now 15-year-old Danny left as well. Despite what he told the drivers who would pick him up a couple of months later, he actually wouldn't have been able to join the military due to his limp. Donald and David saw each other briefly in 1962, but haven't spoken since. Donald would occasionally try to find his brothers over the years, 
But ultimately, he decided that wherever they were, they were better off there than at home. However, he always had a bad feeling about Danny, like something had happened to him. As of January 2022, David's whereabouts are unknown. The last place he was known to be was Florida in 1963, when he was arrested for vagrancy. I have read that the only surviving photos of Danny alive are of him as a baby. I can't confirm this, but as of January 2022, there are no publicly available photos of him other than his post-mortem photo, which I will leave a link to below. Identifying Danny Armitrout took 60 years to do. It's the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children's oldest case solved by genetic genealogy. If you found this video interesting or informative, I would love it if you would like and share it. For more John and Jane Doe videos, true crime, and other general dark content, I hope you'll consider subscribing and hitting that bell. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.